Bruh. Flat Earth is half the chill, bruh. It, it, it's starting to get kind of out of hand. I mean, I could cut him a little bit of slack in the sense of, you know, if you do the research or do a little bit of reading, you know, there's a lot of good information out there about a flat Earth. But then again, you know what I'm saying, on that same dime, if somebody just presents information to you that you really don't know about, you know, in a nice little manner, anything would be, be believable, you know. But my whole beef about it is, like, just entertaining that idea is ridiculous because the honest truth on a flat Earth could could never come out simply being if the earth was to be indeed flat and all these years we've been thinking the earth is round it would have you have us rethinking everything we ever was taught like religion science just everything and just being realistic that could never be the case so the fact that people just even entertain the idea of a flat earth it, it's just ridiculous because the truth of the matter could never come out Date, romantic, romantic date or something. <laughs> Whoa, welcome to the Best Friend Weekend Podcast. This your man Aldo Nice. It's your boy Raj Move, aka the only one of us that hasn't had a podcast done with a three-piece suit. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, it's your boy Lowe's, aka C A P. C I Maha. <laughs> Hey, you like how Raj just finessed another person on the podcast? <laughs> <Right on now. laughs> His actual role is the Denver um, executive producer. Okay, yeah. So he's producing all things Denver right now. So mm-hmm. if Raj's sound quality is better, you know what I'm saying? This yeah. podcast is brought to you by Mile High CI Studios. Uh, we'll be in there. Um, best, friend, best friend weekend. weekend. Okay, I'm not even worried about that. What I'm worried about is what Rumble Williams just said. He mm-hmm. said that the earth, he talking about these flat earthers. But my question is, he said, um, if you listen to the research, it's some really good shit. What research is good about a flat earth? How you got good research about some shit that's fake? Maybe if the earth is flat, the pollution don't stay. It just go. Maybe so so, so now, but but if the earth is a sphere, it just drip off the side? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, no, it just stays in the bubble. <laughs> it just stays in the atmosphere would this, why, if it ain't. Gotcha. Yeah. It just stays okay. in there. But if it's Either flat, way, it's it just float away. It's so if so it's when a plane flat, flies, it evaporates. But if it's round, it just <laughs> get it get locked in with the roundness. <laughs> exactly. So, so if a you plane ever blew smoke in a balloon before? Uh, I've 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 poured honey over a balloon before just to see what happened. And Mar, have that, you ever blew smoke uh, in a balloon? If you ever blew smoke in a balloon, you understand what I'm saying? Blow smoke in a balloon and blow smoke on a table. Yeah, but if I blow smoke on a flat surface, it's gonna, you know, it's, it's pretty good itself. It's gonna go bye bye. <laughs> My question is, <laughs> if you fly across the Earth, do what you go undid when you get to one side, yeah. and then come back on up. You double back, man. Stop it, man. The other thing that stuck out to me about that is that's something that no, but it's all the what what they, what they believe in. What it is is that we look like a map. It's some like like a map. Like we're literally flat. So, like, you know how your map make, like, a little McDonald's M's on the top and on the bottom? I guess it'd be McDonald's <laughs> W's on the bottom. <laughs> That's is just... what it is. So, you don't fly under the earth. You just keep going. You just get so, to like, the we, we, like, when we, no, we start stop. out, this we on ridiculous. the left side Not of the world. Not allowing this conversation to continue. No, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. We're no, on the left side of the world, and uh-huh. China is on the right side. Boom. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I like the conversation. My question is, this my statement is, is ridiculous. when Negroes kind of get a little bit of information, they just run with it like it's true. Like you could tell them just certain parts that kind of make sense, and they're like, oh yeah, man, that's real. Cause it's flat. What about that super earth? With Dick Gregory Not even that, the earth. With the super earth that's close by, where all the, the 1.5 million black men are missing, and they're not all in jail. You hear Dick Gregory say that? The Gregor says 1.5 black men missing, and they're not all in jail. So and one and a one half. 1.5 black, black men? So yeah. like a man and a half? A man one, and a half. 1.5 black men. <laughs> a man and a half. They're all missing. It's, yeah. Missing. Yeah, okay. I'm listening to you. And when you, when one you man wake and up, then a half a man. It would be both of them. Amazing. It wouldn't be they all. No, it's not half. It's 1.5 black men missing, and they all at the super earth. One and a half. Black men. I don't yeah. want to go there. 
It's only no, mess around to be a half point. a nigga. That's when you start <laughs> telling people like, "How this is why Tupac's still living," and you come with a whole little analysis, and then people run with it, man. It's the same type of thing. Nah, man. Tupac real life was he when the, the, the was it two days after he died, he came to a party in Queensboro in Shreveport. So he was one of the people on what Dick Gregory said. He's one of one point five. Yeah. People. Mm-hmm. So who was the other point five? Uh, probably Biggie Smalls. I would think that's backwards. <laughs> I think that's ass backwards. I mean, we on flat earth, so we might as well just make this, <laughs> make this shit all the way ridiculous. Man, if y'all if y'all listening to the podcast and y'all mess with us, man, everybody go give us five stars, like we said. Sure. Um, follow us online. Check that Twitter, man. All the things at BLW Pod, man. Make sure you're checking us out on Twitter. We got a bunch of cool stuff going on at yeah. Best Friend Weekend. Follow us on SoundCloud. Follow us on all that stuff. Comment, but, comment, 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 bro. We want to know. So, I mean, we talk about, we celebrate victories, man. We celebrate accomplishments. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I guess this is kind of like an accomplishment, and I want to talk about this. Our YouTube page, which don't have hey. a whole bunch of followers. No. Like, people don't even really know we do stuff on YouTube. But we post everything on YouTube. Yeah. And um, boys must have found our YouTube page, and we getting comments from people across the world now, <laughs> people we don't even know, who commenting on our last. We podcast. appreciate it though. Hey, we appreciate it though. So the first dude, his name is um, Jay Mansuf. He commented on the last um, podcast that we did about Bruno Mars finessing the culture, mm-hmm. and his exact comment was this: FYI, one, Trinidad Jams had a writing credit on Uptown Funk. Two. Michael Jackson won an Album of the Year Grammy for Thriller. Three, Prince was nominated twice for Album of the Year. Lionel Richie's Can't Slow Down was selected over Purple Rain. And music from the motion picture U2's The Joshua Tree was selected over Sign of the Times. So that was his comment. So that was him firing, hot fire, shots fired. We appreciate that, bro. At the Best Friend Weekend. Everything y'all was saying? That was, no, that was dead dead. No, I just thought he was just letting us know shit we didn't know. Well, you said one of them, though. I thought I said that. It was a straight swagger jack from tri- from Uptown Funk. Go give it to well, whatever the hell it whatever is. Whatever it was. Hey man, shout out though. We appreciate the comment, bro. I ain't mad at that dude. Now the next dude. Oh. Uh, but before you get to the next dude, I also I wanted to say this. Uh, sometimes you get lost in the sauce whenever you're having a conversation about a certain thing. I wanted to say this last week that this this uh, sensei said something about we hmm. we like our music from a non-black face, mm-hmm. and everybody that she said. Has a non-black face. Like, I just wanted to reiterate that. <laughs> but also, Prince, I wouldn't be surprised if it came out as not black. You know what I'm saying? Like, he might be. I think he, Prince Maybe is he is. Nah, Prince, Prince but is But how, nah. how do you know that? It's more likely to come out that Prince wasn't really a man. So yeah, you know his mama queen and his daddy Prince king? Was, like, you know that? Yeah. Prince was beautiful. Yeah, he was. Hey, but I think Prince from New Iberia, though. Nah, Prince nah. could hoop for real. Yeah, Prince could hoop. Prince was on the uh, basketball team in high school. But outside of that, he's not a blackface. He's he's a, a light skin. He's as light skin as you can get. But what about Michael so, Jackson? Michael Jackson turned his light skin to Liz Claiborne. Light skin, light skin. When he won Thriller, though, he was our skin color. Yeah, but his nose kept growing, and he didn't like that. I mean, black people win the Grammy every you know sometimes. Like it's not like we never win it. No, we don't take all the hell. We win it sometimes. We just take the majority. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to say that she mentioned something about we not liking our music from a black face, but everybody that she mentioned didn't have well, a black Well, she did face. say New Edition, so she, too, and Bobby Brown. That's some black face. Because she just saw Negroes. the movie, obviously. Like, there's better examples of Bobby Brown. <laughs> she just watched the New Edition documentary. Because she never been a 22, yeah. 23. She know what channel BT is. Yeah, she really... She probably, nah, she watched Revolt. Right. <laughs> no, that's all she watched. <laughs> she watched Revolt. That's all she watched. Her favorite show must be um what is it, Mary Jane being Mary Jane. <laughs> nah, Be I don't Mary see Jane. Yeah. Well, somebody actually, somebody else actually accused us of woman bashing big oh, yeah. on the last two podcasts. He trying to smoke and guess what? Podcast. It it wasn't a woman. It was a dude. Dude said, "Listen, y'all been woman His bashing for two it. two podcasts in a row." <laughs> That's what happened. She put that pressure on her, Roger. She yeah, said, yeah. you're going to be listening to this. You got you to tell him. I need to see the text message. Mm. You let him know. We, I'm Is that what happened? That. Yeah. Y'all think his old lady made him do she it? She pressured him. He'd be at home listening to it while they cooking and stuff. So this is like DJ Envy. Exactly like Envy. That's pressure, though. Envy old lady put Envy pressure on him, tripping, though. though. He was tripping, though. Who was <laughs> tripping? 
<laughs> envy when he when he this week when he walked out on them boys. He was yeah, too. he but he like he but he super light skinned though. He was so smoking he, weed before he went to school. When before he went to work. Nah, mm-hmm. we don't make you do that. He took a shot or two. Well, hold on. Now, I hold on. <laughs> nah, we. I, <laughs> I don't even have to say it. Y'all know you know what I'm Shut about up. to say. Shut up, Roger. <laughs> we're back to pod, podcast. Let's see what weed does to you. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, it don't, I make guess, you walk, it don't make you walk out though. I guess when you when your old lady tell you to go check them boys, you go check them. And she boys. want to hear it too. Don't I wanna, don't I want? Let me see the text. No, nah, you ain't doing it in public. Stop yeah. messing with uh with the Erica Mena. Hey, <laughs> hey. that's what they say. Hey, hey. The other comment we got that was that jumped off the page was from somebody named Far D two three four five. Man, read that, please. I gotta read this in its entirety. Please read that. Y'all, please let me listen. I mean, let me let me let me let me say it all the way through and listen. Make notes about what your favorite parts are because it's ridiculous. Roger, I want to hear what Roger got to say. Okay, so he said, "Notice, black people, all caps. This is not really a question of culture vultures. It's a question of proprietorship or ownership of black music. Black people created all forms of modern music, and as such, black people must control, nurture, and protect modern music. Simple." It is our legacy to the rest of the world. We have a hundred glorious years of great musical innovation. We also have the many CEOs, salesmen, and pitchmen, and entrepreneurs ready to go sell black to the rest of the world. So should black people exclusively control modern music globally? Yes. Hmm. Yes, we should partner with other people, but the asset itself belongs to its creator. Billions are being made from black talent worldwide, Yet the world shoots and kills the incarcerated black children with impunity. When every black child has a black boss or manager, when he or she is ready to contribute to the world, then we have arrived. So Bruno Mars question. I love Bruno and he gives all due respect to the black innovators of our music. But as we know now, we have a massive relationship problem with the Latino community who it is said seeks to replace black people. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is not a question of appropriation, but one of contribution. Or do they bring anything to the table? Do they improve the music? Do they innovate musical? The answer is no. So why allow them into our culture anymore? Also, the non-black slash Latino community refuses to fight for the black cause. And this goes for all other races too. The white, <laughs> Jewish, Indian, Chinese, etc., why are they in the industry at all? To make money, right? God. Yet they cannot understand, make anything pop. This is unacceptable. Equity must flow in both directions. So what I'm going to first say to Farm D, 2, 3, 4, 5, you are welcome to not listen to our podcast. No, 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 no. We need that. Appreciate you listening, bro. Honestly, man. He don't know that. We need people like you on the podcast. Keep Thank coming. You so much, <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, we keep got yeah. The views, the views of Aldo Nice do not necessarily. Nah, reflect we know. The views keep listening and make sure you podcast. comment all the time. LLC. Why would you say Aldo Nice? I just read somebody's comments off. That's not my views. No, you just said oh, you want him nah, to not listen. Nah. You oh, also you said him. that oh, he shouldn't yeah, listen yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. to the podcast no more. Go ahead, Ross, and please you let called him a racial slur, which wasn't nice either. So he might not be a nigga though. He might be a Caucasian guy. Go ahead. Or, or he's Spanish. Um, yeah, Find no, I, you know, I, I think that this guy is definitely has a lot of free time. Cause that's long to write on on our stuff. Uh, but thank you for taking the time. We just that good. That we just that good. Stuff. Don't nobody know it yet. Um, <laughs> I, I want to know. So, like, did everything um, originate from Negro spirituals? <laughs> Was that? <laughs> Is that where we originated from country music? They had Negro spiritual country and then Negro spiritual rap and pop and all that jazz. So no, like, it was, you know, a, it was a black dude who did country some. music. I forgot. Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry, the first black country music artist. Cadillac oh, Records. Okay. So we're going back to the Black History uh, Month episode? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what I'm saying is, is you just, whenever people speak in absolutes, it's, it's, I, I find it funny. I don't think that black people created all music. Mm. I, mean, I don't, you know, I don't, that's not, that's not what I believe. But right. I do think that we at least innovated every type of music, even the ones that we didn't create. Mm-hmm. And 
I, yeah, I think we should. I think we should be in control of it. But I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I, so you think? Else so I'm lost. So you feel like everything should go through Kanye, Jesus. Anytime anybody puts something out, they have to submit it to Jesus, and then he gives the no a go on it. I don't know. I just yeah, think the question too. of appropriation is is such a slippery slope. You can't sit up here and say that everybody needs to pay homage to black folks for every movie. Because listen, we just because I was scared, like, I, and I heard somebody say this before. This ain't a hot take that I'm coming up with on my own. But just because I'm black, does that mean that I control the rights to every, like, I can do black music, but you can't just because my skin color is a certain way and yours ain't? Like, I didn't make this, I didn't make it up. But what is black music, though? Yeah, like, but it, does black music... Be- music is... I look at music as music, bro. It so, is. So, are we mad at gangster rap? Uh, 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 are we mad at, like, little cats from the suburbs who do gangster rap? And then we say, man, you appropriating gangster culture, but you're not gangster. Maybe so. That might, I, can, I can see that better than I can see all genres of music. I don't know, C.I., you, you said something about it. Nah, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree with him at all. But keep coming. <laughs> Boy. Keep, hey, keep coming, keep coming. Also, you, go ahead. Hey, man, it's it's black people in all genres of music. So, hey, go find the black people. <laughs> hey, hey, do yeah, but thing I, there. <laughs> I, just, I just feel like I don't think you can you can make it a a, a black music thing. And music is just music. You can't tell people how to feel. Now you can tell you little dudes from the suburbs stop trying to play gangster and all that right there or whatever, you know, rapping you shooting people up in your lyrics. I can see that, but I can't tell a little white girl who got a little rhythm and come with a little song R and B song or something. You can't sing that song because you're not black. The whole point is pay homage. If you're over there and pay respect, which the first commenter said that you know if if Trinidad James getting the writing credit on Uptown Funk, then he paying and he always Bruno Mars always stepping out of his way to say, hey, look. This person, I'm influenced by this, I'm influenced by that. Yeah. You can't really hate it, man. You can't hate I'm the game. I'm not mad at that, man. But that dude's kind of... Man, y'all can say he can comment. He can comment all he want. But he said that non-black Latino community refuses to fight for the black cause. And hey, they got their own cause, bro. They're trying to stay over here. He actually said the black course. He did, I, but I'm assuming that's what he means, right? He, he, you know, I wasn't going to call same out... Same thing, right? I wasn't going to call out his typo, but... Yeah, I mean, I think there's some truth to that statement. You know my theory on this. Now, I'm not going to dive real deep into it, but I definitely have a theory that, you know, as far as minorities go, you never want to be in last place. No. Like, white folks always feel like they're at the top of the heap. Not Asian black. people feel like they they right up right up under them. So then it's either what? Black people or Hispanic people nah. in last place. It's educated so, Mexicans. They feel like they better than regular Mexicans. They right up under the Asians. Well, educated black people feel like they better than niggas. Exactly. But Not both, as bad, though. But both both of them, nobody want to be last. No. They look at us and they be like, oh, lazy black people, oh, get up off your ass. Stop, yeah. pick up your pants and stop carrying guns and maybe and you won't get shot by the police. Uh, we can say lazy Mexican lady, stop laying on your back and having babies every two months. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you just said that. <laughs> you said that. The views, just, uh, the views expressed by CAP. <laughs> I mean, no, if we can say about lazy black people, we can't say about lazy nobody else. We don't people that's lazy. No, I, I get you, but I mean, I think that there is some validity to that statement that all minorities who are at the quote unquote bottom of the barrel do need to have some solidarity so that we could all kind of be together to rise above. I think there's some truth to that. I agree with that. But I and I, I kind of feel him on that. But most of the most of that shit is just black talk. Like you can't just say we should exclusively control modern music globally. Yeah, that sounds crazy. ridiculous. Yeah. Because if you really back it up, probably everything we do is influenced by African people, and we talked about this on the podcast yeah. that African music is. Like the the rhythms of the, the Madiba and drums and all of that. Yeah. That's what probably started all of the rap and hip hop. How that dance go again? You saw the dance. Man, you saw the dance. It was no, it was doing the Wakanda dance. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you get it. And we had when we had Baba Films on the other day. He said the same thing. He was you like, feel me? he said, y'all not the same as us. Yeah, y'all not Africans. So maybe they sitting there feeling like everything we do is appropriating that culture. They, they, they do think they're better than us though. Most of them. Remember, he said we when he. So it's the moral of the story. Everybody think they're better than black people. <laughs> God and, and poor Mexicans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Let me move on, Is man. Because I want to talk race. Rap though. There's still gangster rap. Young Jeezy still make music. Who? Young Jeezy. Yeah, man. Well, Twenty One I mean, Savage is gangster rap. I mean, uh, I, mean I know on. what you mean. It's Snoop weird. Snoop Dogg rap. just put out a it's CD. This podcast is brought to you by Snoop Dogg. I feel like Snoop would actually like high five me you know 
So this this podcast brought to you by Snoop. I see you, Snoop, still making music forty years later. That's cool. <laughs> that's gangster rap, huh? So yeah, there still is. I, I don't know what it is. So you said I never gave it a rap? listen. So beautiful. It was at one point. I just time. want you to It was at one point. Yeah, time. What about one, two, <laughs> three, that's gangster rap, four. Huh? <laughs> Snoop Doggy Dog is about to shoot your ass out at the door or something like that. He said. That's Sexual seduction. <laughs> but I don't think the white rappers <laughs> are trying to be black. I think they're. I think they're weird and. Yeah. The the white people like weird people. Yeah, of course. You know, <laughs> shit. That, that's hey, let's is. let's 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 pivot to some stories about some um some race. I got three stories that it's just some stories that's been in the headlines this week. First, we're gonna talk a little bit about um we love LSU. That's our go Tigers, man. Um, our our home state team. Um, I we'd be remiss because last week we didn't mention our boy Odell Beckham. Hmm. They they found Odell was laid up in the bed. We shot in um he was, Snow Bunny. He, he had a little he had a little pizza on the bed and he was blowing that weed. It was a whole pizza. It wasn't no little he had a whole pizza on the bed. Yeah. And he was blowing that weed and he was basically asking her what she wanna do, if she was gonna do something, and she was bumping a couple of lines off the bed. So, you know, that was a controversy for like a, a couple of hours. If that long. And then it was like, nah, we good. We we're gonna forget all about it, Odell good. My question is, does this solidify Odell is not gay? In your eyes, Raj Smooth. So no, <laughs> um, I guess let me ask, let me turn it around and ask you a question. If you if you hook up with men, right? If you're a man and you hook up with men, and you hook up with women, you're are gay. you gay? You're definitely gay, of course. Yes, you gay. Then Odell's gay. <laughs> so he, like, he he might he might hook up. He might have not been hooking up with that woman though. I me, mean, one, one thing I know about the video. Friend. Oh, go ahead. He had a shirt on still, and he was under the covers. It's kind of weird. He was cold, probably. Nah, that yeah, was on the line. The air on top of it. And the pizza was in there. He was in France, right? Was he in, was France? He in France? I believe he was in France. I believe he was in France. It's cold in France. It's cool to do that in France. I don't know. I don't know what he was doing, but I know I'm pretty sure he's done enough things to be gay to me <laughs> than enough <laughs> things to not to be gay. So he's, and it's cool if he's gay. He's gay. It's all good, you know. You can't call him gay, man. I, I'm you not saying say, no, I'm not nothing gay. gay. I've, like, I've seen him. I've seen him. You know, do some things that were questionable. <laughs> can't call that. Baby. That man I'm do be dancing. I, th- th- I say, I think he's gay. He do a lot of weird stuff. Hey, he he was in a hot tub with a bunch of dudes in their drawers, and a dude came from up under the water. But I could see. He did that. Did I could see. Okay, That's so gay. look, that was That's gay. gay I think that that was gay. But look, okay, cool. I <laughs> some people just like to have fun. No, nah, it's not fun. That's good. No, but I, you know, cool. They wanted to make a cool video, but whenever no, it's he not, it's looked not a cool at video. no, no, ass. you no. Raj is making a point. Of you being homophobic right now. Like when we first put the video on, when we sitting here with the microphone, <laughs> boys was pretending like the microphone was a big lay mind and clowning. I, 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 I wasn't here for that. That ain't that, you. I mean, you was the main one doing the CAP. So look, yeah. So <laughs> you, were, you the only one who put your tongue on it. All the rest of us was just pushing the mic, touch the mic with your mouth, with your mouth. So outside of that. Outside of that, I've seen Odell look. I don't know which what what it is, but you could go find the clip. I'm pretty sure it's very easy to find. Just type Odell gay, and you'll find the clip. Like an Odell, <laughs> a Odell compilation of gay, of gay. Acts. So is this what you is this what you do? Rise. That's one of your top three searches. I know your top three searches. One is Odell gay. Another one is Big Sean nude. <laughs> <laughs> what's your third what's one, Rise? What's your third one? You know him. You said you know him. Safari. Safari long. <laughs> Safari long. <laughs> That's right. Top three searches. If you put an S in this shit, it's going to come up Safari long. Long dick style. I'm sorry for interrupting you. I just, go ahead, bro. Man, if, if, the camera, if the camera was on you like it was on Odell. <laughs> but look. Three so, seconds of some shit you could do that looks gay. I'm going to tell yeah, you what yeah. has never happened. I'm going to tell you what has never happened to me because I somewhat disagree. Me and you play flag and we're usually around the same area. And, you know, we have to bend over to pick our flags up. I've never checked you out when you looked at your flags, when you picked at your flag. Odell has. You don't know what he was Odell looking has. at, though. Check the nigga out. Yeah, he ain't never goofed nobody, though. He, 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 <laughs> he could have been, been looking at his cleats. Dude. Oh, man, these are nice cleats. No way. 
He said, oh, man, that's a nice ass he has. You know he's a fashionable guy. I would guy. like to he's smash fashionable. him. He's fashionable. <laughs> that's not what he that's said. That's what he said. I want to, I, if I had the opportunity, I would smash him. No, we are I not. This is man. not what this no. podcast is about. We are not about to sit up here and talk about Odell being gay. It was just, I just <laughs> threw that out there for a second. The real LSU tiger I wanted to talk about was Eric Reed. If y'all don't remember Eric Reed, won number one for LSU when they uh, went to the national title game and lost. Mm-hmm. Been playing for San Francisco for some years. Um, this might even be a moot point by the time that this podcast actually drops because he might be signed. But it's NFL free agency right now. And the fact of the matter is, he has not been signed. Um, why is that a, him at all Why is that a big deal? He's a 26-year-old um, safety in the NFL who many people say is versatile and people need players like him on his team. To this point, Raphael Bush got signed by the Bills, Tavon Wilson by the Lions, Teron Matthew, Honey Badger by the Texans, Cody Davis by the Jags, Darren Carey by the Jags, Adrian Phillips by the Chargers, Nate Elpner by the Patriots, Terrence Brooks by the Jets, Gilcrest by the Raiders, Burnett got the Steelers deal today worth that bag, um, Bragley um, McDougal got one for the Seahawks, so did King and Alexander. All three of them got signed by the Keyhawks. Seahawks, the Saints got Kirk Coleman three years, $16.5 million, and Keith Tandy... Got signed by the Bucks, so all of these safeties got signed, and Eric Reed didn't. So why is that a big deal? Well, because Eric King wrote a—I mean, Eric King. I'm sorry, Eric Reed, the Freudian slip. This podcast is brought to you by Eric King, I suppose. Um, Eric Reed was part of the original kneeling movement with Colin Kaepernick. He wrote a whole article in the New York mm-hmm. Times called "Why Me and Colin Decided to Kneel." Yeah, he is the other piece of the Colin Kaepernick Eric Reed. Like, he just low key. Look, don't white folks ain't having that, man. <laughs> They're not having it. They've been making example out of us for years. Every time you step, the first, the first person to cross the line will get example made out of. Every time, dog. Now those who follow have a, a you know a better success rate, but the first one to jump out there, always gonna get crucified, man. It's look at the history. Come on now. So do we not think Eric Reed's gonna get signed? Not for what he want. I, I just, I, I just, all those names you gave me, good safeties. I'd, I'd assume. You think they're better than Eric? We watched the good. Yeah, I'm man. gonna finish what I go was ahead, gonna go say, ahead, and then I'll answer your questions. <laughs> so uh, all these, all these safeties, I assume, are good safeties. Not saying that they're better than Ed Reed, but just Eric Reed. Wow, we got all kind of names here. Right? Hey, right? King Ed Reed. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so anyway. We watched a good safety in New Orleans for about six years. Kenny Vaccaro has not been signed yet. Why not? You get what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, sure, there's some examples, but there's one example of another mm-hmm. good safety that doesn't have much to do with the whole kneeling thing that hasn't been signed yet either. Maybe so. So, nigga, it, it, are you the same person who, like, well, RG3 didn't get signed last year, so Kaepernick ain't got nothing to be worried about? I mean, that's that same argument. That's a shit argument. No, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I don't think it's the same thing as RG3 and Kaepernick. I think RG3 had his... RG Kaepernick only only played for one team. RG3 had another shot. I mean, granted, it was with the Browns, but he still had another <laughs> shot. That's not a shot. Kaepernick boy. never got another shot. It's the toilet bowl. Okay. Do I think that Eric Reed is going to get a shot? Yeah, absolutely. He should. Absolutely. I think he'll get signed. Because you think talent prevails? Uh no, I just think that I think that everything I think that the kneelers, him being a, him being a, a a leader of the kneelers, if you will, has a lot to do with the reason that he hadn't been signed. Of course, I think that. Okay, but so you do agree that that's playing that something to do with it? Okay, absolutely, absolutely. So I think what teams are just kind of waiting for is for his market to just decrease. If you want me to give it to you real, like I really just think that he did have you know, a tweet. He's a he's a high profile safety. Like he could be the highest paid safety in the league. He, he did have a tweet last talent. week that said um. That just what you're saying. He was like, "Don't think for a second that my price is gonna go down because of like mm-hmm. because of the controversy because that ain't that ain't happening." So he did pull it. He did tweet that out this week. I mean, he went to shits. Like I'm, I don't know. I just think it's a it, it's since, an interesting story. Go ahead. What you say? Since he said that, he's probably not playing this season. Yeah, that's, I would I would venture to say I venture to say the same thing. I mean, like this. Let's like, just be real, like he's man. Not, like be real about the situation, man. Like this dude is kneeling. He high priced. The ratings are down. They not having it, man. You I'll not tell you playing. This, I'm in a progressive state, and so I'm in, I'm also in 
customer service. So I have to talk to about 100 people a day. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say probably at least two two guys come in that would probably be football fans but or NFL football fans but aren't. And I'm in a progressive state. Aren't football fans, aren't NFL football fans anymore because of the kneeling thing. So that whole ratings being down thing is, 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 is true. Wow. It's a real thing. Like I, and, and regardless of how crazy or phony you think it is, mm-hmm. I've met at least 10 people, 10 old white so, men. So they say, I don't watch football say, no more because you Negroes are I'm not nigga. watching NFL football. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. He definitely said, he said that it ain't the owner's fault. I mean, the, the team manager's fault. He said, people who know football know I could play. He said, it's the owner's fault. It's not the GM's. The GM's assigned me, but he's like, it's the owner's. So yeah, he put right. he, he, he he really going out there. He, he really going out there. Talking this. too much. Yeah, he's not about to play. No, you yeah, can't no, talk yeah, like exactly. that. Exactly. Definitely. You can't talk the like GM that. GM don't sign a check, fam. I think you could stand up like like Los. I think I think we on the same wa- wavelength here. I think you can stand up for yourself and stand up for what you believe in. Yeah. But also shut up at the same time. You can't. Like, you don't you have can't, to. You don't yeah. have to go out of your way to 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 try and call the <laughs> owners out. Like that's your boss. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You, you don't shoot slugs at the money. You know. You don't look a gift horse in the mouth. I don't know why. I, that's not. I don't really feel that way. But it's. <laughs> I, I think it's funny. A gift horse. It's a funny thing. To know. Okay. I, I think. He, I think it's a real. It's a real interesting take on it for him to even come out there and just have that. Have that strong. Strong opinion on it. I mean, he could feel that way. But the minute you start saying it, you're kind of putting yourself out there. Yeah. I mean, I agree. He might should have shut the hell up. Like my thing is, you don't think. Uh, what's that dude there who didn't play at all in the Super Bowl? Oh, um, Malcolm Jank. Malcolm. He ain't say a word. <laughs> You don't think he felt some kind of way, bro? He ain't said a word. No, he ain't he, said. He ain't you know said, what happened? He just got a bag for the Titans, yeah. And he still ain't talked, but he kept his mouth shut. He could have went crazy and said a whole bunch of whatever, but he didn't. You keep your mouth shut, man. It's only thirty-two teams, man, and two million people want to play for them thirty-two teams, man. You already in the league, dog. No, you but can feel the, however you want to feel. On the flip feel. side. On the flip side, so let's look at the reality of it. To me, the reality of it is Eric Reed made a lot of money. Since he's been in the NFL, has compared he? To the rest has of he though? Not NFL money. He bro. only probably on his rookie contract, probably. Okay, cool. Let me go back and say what I said again, because you you, you kind of interrupted me. So Eric Reed has made a lot of money since he's been That's in the NFL. That's your thing today. You gonna keep saying that I'm interrupting you? You gonna you gonna get in your? You back are interrupting you, you, you me. You're not, you're not listening to me. <laughs> compared to <laughs> compared to the, I'm on my gift horse actually. <laughs> so um, <laughs> Eric Reed, Eric Reed made a lot of money compared to the rest of us. Compared to me and you of the world. Nah, Eric Reed has made talk a lot yourself. of money. <laughs> <laughs> so I forgot you make a billion dollars a year. I mean, no, I, get, I get it. I get the bag. Continue. He makes a lot of money. He makes a lot of money. So. Check my pockets, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I might make a billion dollars. Now, but anyway, you know. so Eric Reed, Eric Reed made a lot of money. And if, and if he, I think if I came to this crossroads of, I made enough money. I'm not going to be a puppet anymore. Like, I really, truly believe, like, I'm I'm the best safety in the league. Like, and, and you know, he's up there. He's not the best, but I'm a really good safety in this league. And I, I'm going through this because I'm standing up for what I believe in. Like, should he get? You know, I know I know he should shut up. Like, that's really, that's how I really feel about it. But should he? Like, should he really, like, why, why, why not just be yourself? Say, I, say what you want to say. I agree right. with that. And I think that there's a a, a a class of athlete that's coming along right now who are kind of like, I'm okay being socially conscious and, and taking whatever ramifications come with that. And I think he wanted a, one of the, the four the forebearers of that movement. <laughs> and he, sometimes he maybe, got to pay maybe, with your pocket. Maybe he saved his money, you know, because what do you, 20, how old are you, 26, 26. 27, 26, 26 years old? He got a whole lifetime to live. And Somebody going to sign him. And but he didn't it, graduate from LSU. <laughs> so we agree that now. we agree for the cause, right? We yeah. definitely agree. We definitely agree for the cause, though. Yeah, I'm down for the cause all day. All we right, just, but I'm I mean, not mad. We at wouldn't it. go to work and no, no, we're, I wouldn't we're, do it. We're not make, we're not making millions of dollars. That's what I, that's what I'm saying. We're he not making millions money. of dollars, but we all agree, right? Right? Yeah. If uh, I got paid, but, if I got paid a bag a year. Then I'll probably have to... Yeah, I'll I shut might, up. I might I'm, chill. Listen, but it's a point when right. you're making I'm that... I'm within. It's a point when you're making that bag for a whole bunch of years. I think he can look at a person like Colin Kaepernick and he could think, you know what, Colin, all right? Yeah. Colin not getting that bag right now, but Colin <laughs> kind of suing that league and Colin got other opportunities where he making stuff happen. He's he raising, raising money, money putting he, it in his pocket. He, he, Colin probably straight. Probably Colin probably got a non-profit that's moving. He, got he probably shame. thinking, look, if I nah, get out of there, it's me, and, it's me and Colin again. We right back to it. 
He got all black clothes. Le- and, uh, then next, maybe, and then if Odell get out next, then what you gonna think? Oh man, come on! It's man. me and Colin and Odell. Come on, man! <laughs> come on, man! <laughs> Leave saying. Odell out of this, man. Odell ain't fighting for y'all cultural, uh, cultural, culture wars, man. <laughs> Definitely, he now on the uh, Freedom Trail. <laughs> Raj, you heard the, one of them names I named. Oh, Raphael Bush. I'm so I'm so upset that he's gone. Uh, Raph, Raphael Bush, man, my favorite saint of all time. <laughs> you likely snatch your stuff down. And I like him because he was number twenty five, and his name is Bush. So everybody uh, got to no, wear he Reggie Bush jerseys. Did. He he did every single Saints fan a, a, that owns a Reggie Bush jersey a service. For yeah. By like that's if we had a kicker next year who came noble. and his name and he wore number two and his name was Brooks. Cutting out would love that kicker named Brooks. We'd all rock that Brooks jersey. Yeah, with that, with that two dope. that's faded. <laughs> <laughs> if Chase Daniels' real name was Chase Cooks, we would have loved that. <laughs> we like, oh, I got that number that's 10. That's crazy. Cooks. Y'all, <laughs> y'all still have those jerseys? I have a Reggie Bush jersey, but it's now a Raphael Bush jersey. <laughs> 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 these things, these things happen, man. Oh, uh, so the, kind of sticking to sports, but definitely st- sticking to race. An ex Atlanta Hawks employee is suing the team for discrimination against white people. Let's talk about this story. Margot Klein, Margot, such a Margot, Margot, right? Um, in a lawsuit filed Friday, Margot Klein Mar- come to Margot. <laughs> Margot Klein <laughs> says yes, Margot. Says Hawks external affairs director David Lee, shout out to the brother who is black, promoted a culture of discrimination against white people, especially white women. Klein, who is white, worked in the NBA team's corporate social responsibility department as a community development coordinator for the last five years. But they fired him. Klein <laughs> alleges that Lee was dismissive and exclusionary toward white employees and would often make jokes about white culture, hiring and promoting black employees who Klein said were less qualified over white people, according to the lawsuit. (laughs) Klein said the organization ignored her complaints and instead unfairly scrutinized her work and impeded her ability to do her job, often gossiping and ridiculing her and talking black. The lawsuit also (laughs) alleges white co-workers were told not to speak with Klein or they could lose their job. (laughs) Oh my God. Can this even be a thing? Hey. Do y'all think it's a real thing? That's my first question. Do you think that really happened? Lois, what you think? That, that... Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Without question. They definitely and I want to say it's great. Away from and I want to say, I wanna shout say out, this podcast is brought to you by David <laughs> Lee. Hey, one time for the culture, bro. Didn't he used to play ball for the um for the, for the the Warriors, David Lee? No, that might not, not be. Not, say, not, that not David Lee. Okay. They, nobody's hiring they, him. They, to no, go he played for the Hawks, too. Okay, so he, nobody's hiring David he Lee. He playing, but okay, this podcast brought to you by David Lee. Off top, hey, straight up. I mean, I'm not mad at him, bro. I mean, we, we got we got to get our, our shine on sometime in the front office, bro. <laughs> I mean, shit, let us shine through, man. Look, hey, don't talk to her. You still want to work here? We, y'all been doing it to us for years, man. I ain't mad, bro. Y'all you better, you better to learn how to talk black. That's that's the only <laughs> advice I hey, got for him. She better get down with the brown. Huh? Hey, you better go listen to some yeah, get down hey. with the brown dog. No, <laughs> no, no. As soon as they walked in the office, yeah. You should already it know what time rap. it was. And it was in Atlanta, too? You should have known yeah. what time it was, dog. When you walked in there and saw that, that Tupac poster, <laughs> when you got off the elevator, <laughs> <laughs> you should have knew goddamn well. Scarface. <laughs> you kind of broke out that Ebonics dictionary, that, that Ebonics app. Um, um, Mark, Margo, could you come see? I'm going to need all of those TPS reports on my desk by Tuesday. Oh, Reggie, what's up, my nigga? <laughs> <laughs> Hey Margo, could you yeah. Margo, come on. Right now, come on. We have a meeting. We have a meeting. Can you get out? Can you get us some chicken wings? <laughs> fifth of Henderson, please. All of this. Yeah. Wang stop. Look at that. No, <laughs> I, I, I was I was in a situation like that before. Were you really? Do tell. Y- yeah, man. I I mean, I'm not gonna put the company on blast, but this wasn't an American company. Okay. But it wasn't an American. But uh you know, HR was black. The hiring manager was black, and you know, we hit it off. I was, I was able to get my homies on all that, and it was a great paying job. UPS. You know, I'm in North Carolina at the time, so great paying tobacco job for North Carolina, North Carolina. North Carolina. And <laughs> now I went tobacco, man. You the Hennessy? <laughs> Philip that, Morris. So he worked the Hennessy company, boy. It was some overseas shit. Go ahead, man. go ahead, I can't go, put ahead the go ahead. Company on blast, but. I was in a situation like that, and they was like, man, it's, it's a lot of black people coming in. And 
they wasn't feeling it. You know what I'm saying? So they probably it probably was a similar loss lawsuit against that company. You know what I'm saying? Well, you the Atlanta, and, and I mean, you you make your point, but like, there's Atlanta Hawks is probably my favorite organization in pro sports. From what I've heard, the Hawks have been doing over the last few. Years. Think about it. Ain't the Hawks the one who got hot sauce at halftime in their game? Hey, he crossing was niggas up <laughs> the whole like for halftime. Boys come out the stands and they get to check hot sauce and he be dropping them. But tell me, you don't want to see that at halftime? I would love watching. I would that. love to watch hot sauce cross. I tell you another thing. Another thing that the Atlanta Hawks had is they had a tender night. <laughs> yes, that night. That was yes, that was, yes. Apparently, it was like super dope. Did you not hear like, about that? No, you got on. Oh you my god, went Ross, to the game. Tell him. You got on Tinder at the game. And then, you know, swiped and through the game, you're talking to your matches. And if you match with somebody, there was a little section somewhere in the stadium, in the arena, for you to go and meet your match that night. They let people just swap seats. They let them go, like, down to the bottom bowl if they had a, a match, like, on the yeah. bottom bowl. Like, the ushers was just letting people go where they want. Yep. Oh, that's fire, though. Know. And then a year afterwards, so, did you see this, ride? Somebody got married at a game this season who met at Tender Night last season. I didn't see it. Yep, that happened. Magic. Like, that's cool. That happened bro. like three weeks ago. Magic. Somebody got married. Like it's Black Hollywood, though. I tell you, so you got to get on the same, on the same, Black on the same Hollywood. tip as that, uh, that lawsuit. Yeah. On the same yeah. tip as that lawsuit, Danny Ferry. I don't know what Danny Ferry was. Whoever their GM was, Danny. I Ferry think it was, was Danny Ferry, GM. and he was sending them emails. And now it was, yeah. So them emails was funny. Now compared, like now I, it, it's all coming full circle mm-hmm. because it was an email that was sent from the GM that was like, hey. Look, we need to get more white people in the games. All the cheerleaders black. Um, all of the, the <laughs> halftime entertainment is black. All the players black. All we got is black people at the game. All the players black. Score like every black. it's too black. We need to get. He was like, we feel like white people are too are scared to come to the games because hey. it's just nothing but just black they did say that. at the game. I but he got fired that. for that. Yeah, and and then the first thing they did afterwards was like, all right, uh, Kyle Corbett, get the hell out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting rid of all of you white people. <laughs> <laughs> so we're we gonna, we gonna black it out there. I'm not mad about that, but if you remember, like you they got watch, white black jerseys too. You ever watch NBA classics with Jordan and Magic? Nip? It's nothing but white folks in the stands, man. Nothing but white folks in the stands, bro. Yeah. They don't look nothing like they do today. So I'm not, I'm not even mad about that. It was for years and years and oh, years. Yeah. There wasn't no black sense. folks yeah. in the stands. So if they want to have an all black crowd, I'm with it, man. Do y'all think Atlanta is the city? Somebody got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, they need. They need Somebody to gotta have all black. They need to rename it to the Black Panthers, the, the Atlanta Panthers, the Atlanta, Atlanta Black Panthers, Panthers. Atlanta Black. <laughs> and they and they best call their basketball vibranium. The, <laughs> stupid. Have a drink called vibranium. Hennessy, Remy, Belvedere, Ciroc, you throw, and a splash that's that vibranium. <laughs> it's like a, a skittle and, and, a, and a splash of, and a splash of Crown Royal vanilla with a little bit of Alize. <laughs> no, I mean I I I aspire in life to be the Hawks external affairs director or better yet. I just aspire to be David Lee. Like I want to have a job where it's just like, (coughs) I can just do what I want. Like Donald Trump can hire all of his partners. That's what he did. All of his cheering. Yeah. Like he could just hire everybody to run the country into the dirt. Like he could do whatever he want, but you mad at the brother for being like, while in white people, I think that's just, I mean, think about the billions of time in history that this has happened to a black person who's got a job at a place. You just went through that last week. <laughs> <laughs> has got a job at a place. <laughs> hey, so got a job at a place where the all people right. try to shine and wall on them. Yeah. Because they black. And she the general. And they having all the little ha 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 white moments. Mm-hmm. We have a little ha 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 black moment. Nanny yeah. nanny boo boo. Tough. I'm with it. Don't be mad. I'm not. That's hilarious. I, I I've never. I'm gonna just be real with y'all. I never had a ha 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 white moment with, or uh, whatever. I've never been ha 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 whited. Oh, you just didn't know. Yeah, you didn't have had Roger. You black. Oh, you, so I'm that. So I'm. I'm stupid. My bad. My my bad. You Bolivius. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> nah, you brought up Bolivius. Balls, nigga. You, they dapped you, then they turned around. It was like, nah. This nigga thinks he's cool. Nigga squirrel. <laughs> yeah, but that's great, not. Great that's not whited. That's not white it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's I'm not what white it is. What's white it? It's got to be a ha 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 in my face. It's got to be something that that I probably wouldn't get in my face. You can't talk behind Bobby behind my back. That's oh. cool. If you talk about me behind my back, I'm okay with it because I don't know. I meant white it like I don't know, don't there's a, like an inside joke that's happening in the office and they're laughing and then you come over there like, ah, what's funny, guys? Oh, 
It's, it's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing. Sharon Sharon's son pooped on a black right. guy. Oh, didn't Raj oh, get pooped on today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Raj, you don't want to tell us a story about how you got pooped on today? <laughs> I don't know if it's actual poop. But it's starting, it smelt and looked like poop. And I didn't have anything at the restaurant that was anywhere near poop. So I think it was. I think I, I was pooped on today. By a baby. Not by a like <laughs> You a, saw how C.I. look. He like, wait a minute. You been to Dubai, boy? That's my first time here and that shit. Right, right here, look. <laughs> Raj, yeah. just tell the truth, man. They tell That's you shit. <laughs> just, just, hey, just tell the truth, Raj. When they laid the tarp down, what you did? <laughs> when the when when the when the uh when the sheik laid that tarp down, it was like, come on, man, you, you came to Dubai for a reason. Well, put that bag next. What to you, you did, man? One point five million. <laughs> when OCU Mayor walked in that room, <laughs> they said, "I just had some corn." What's the hell? Blah 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 blah. Bubble guts. Nah, look at that. Nah, I'm nah, obviously look. being blacked right now. <laughs> this, is, this is being blacked. <laughs> yeah, I said I've never been whited, but I've been blacked. You've been black, right? No homo. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that one. Um, Shout so out to white people, though. We ain't mad about Yeah, we're not mad. We're just, we just enjoying our moment in the sun That's right it. now. That don't happen often for black folks. Hey. We got we to gotta celebrate the minor victories. Like, you know, Obama being president. Yeah. Um, um, the Hawks, um, <laughs> the Hawks, <laughs> external no, three, affairs three, six, director, three six mafia winning. Yeah, that was a great moment. Stay fly, ah 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 ah. Yeah, that type of shit. Okay, so the race story number three that we wanted to talk about. Um, it's kind of racial because it's a racial character. If you guys remember Jonathan Martin from um the Miami Dolphins, he was the guy who started, who was at the forefront of the whole um, NFL bullying scandal. A couple of years ago. Fuck bullying. Yeah. They're Richie, bullying. Richie Incognito. Richie whited. Incognito. Yeah, right? He whited him. Um, so he had an IG post and he's facing charges. He posted something on IG, a picture of some shotgun shells and a shotgun with this message. When you're a bully victim and a coward, your options are suicide or revenge. And in the in the picture, he tagged his old high school, the Miami Dolphins, Richie Incognito, um, Mike Pouncey, and for some reason, Mike Dunleavy's son. And um, so the high, his old high school shut down school for that whole day because they was like, nah, this man, man come this, he coming shit up school. And um, but he faces six years, four felony counts, and of making criminal threats, and a misdemeanor count of possessing a loaded firearm in public. My first question is, why is having a loaded fire gun a misdemeanor, but making threats on social media a felony? Because you made threats to the high school. Did he by tagging him? Yeah, with the gun. Yeah. Was he in Maybe Florida? Not. And is a is a light skinned black man? He knows shit. How tall he was? In, he was in four. Nah, he's he's in he's in L.A. I think because they said uh, somewhere in Cali because he went like Van Nuys Police Department, so it was in Cali somewhere. My first question: How how you get bullied at six four six five three ten? You made it to the league. Well, I think Mike Pouncey and Richie Incognito was the two bullying him though. No, the, what's his name? Jonathan Martin. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, but he, but he made it to the Dolphins though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They was bullying his whole ass. Sometimes he could be a big big te- a big soft nigga. Got all the physical Mike tools. Got the hell up out of there. Mm-hmm. Where he go? I don't know, but he got, he he got, he got the, the hell up out of there. Who? Yeah. Who are you talking about? Mike Pouncey? Mike yeah, Pouncey, my yeah, son. Yeah. Mike Pouncey going and too. He said Mike Pouncey left because of that picture. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. They're running from Richie. You got to run from crazy people. I ain't running from If y'all don't remember the story. Gonna, he ain't going to pull the trigger though. Well. Bitch ass. In the story, the investigation found that Incognito, Pouncey, and John Jerry created a hostile work environment for Martin and others associated with the Dolphins. He left the team in the middle of the season because he was being bullied. Yeah, it was big shit. But now he out there uh, about to go got to go sit down for six years for a stupid Instagram post. Like it's a crazy world we live in. That if you post something on Instagram, you could go sit down. No, if you post it on Instagram and we catch you with that same shit in your car, you got to go. It's just like you saying, right. you post your job, you post your guns and some bullets and, and write your job name on there and... He don't work for the Dolphins no more. Well, who write my ex-job on there. Yeah. Okay. And then two people name on there and we catch you on that street or close anywhere near that vicinity. Got to go. Yeah, I don't know if he was close or nothing, but still, I, I mean, I get the idea, but I don't really get the idea of how, how some people could say wild, wild, wild shit on social media and get away with it. Like boom gang. Like people could say a lot of wild stuff on social media and they yeah. get away with it and like that don't seem like it the wildest thing I've ever heard. That sounds like crazy people stuff. Might be so much of the story. 
I don't know. It just seemed like crazy. No, talk. that does, that does not sound like like that sounds like every bad adjective you can come up with. It's wild. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, right. It's childish. It's, yeah, it's a wild that. and crazy kid. Yeah, you know. So, um, so no, I just think, I just think, yeah, absolutely. Like if he got, if they went and checked on him and he was just like, oh, I was just playing, and the gun was <laughs> locked away, you know, cool. But they caught him with the gun and it was loaded, and it's like, all right. Either you're going to go kill yourself so we'll protect you from yourself, or you're going to go kill somebody else so we're going to protect you from society. I think it's genius to be proactive rather than reactive. So I'm with it. I am if you're doing shit like that, you you don't need to post shit like that. We we talk, we had an we had a, a podcast about rules of the internet. Mm-hmm. That one was an unwritten, unwritten rule. Yeah, you can't be posting you stupid shit then actually be about it. You, actually I mean, be looking like, like you're yeah, about to like do you, it. You, yeah. you can't say, I'm going to kill my baby mama. With and this then, gun right here. Oh, I might kill myself. I haven't made my decision yet. Yeah. And expect not to get in trouble. No, so, and, like, and, and then get pulled it. over and we catch you with the gun. With the toolie. Come on, bro. Sit your ass down for six. With that eye. You should have stayed <laughs> in the dog and took that little rookie, rookie breed. Nah. <laughs> oh, man. Look, I don't have that much more. I got about four other little loose stories that we got sitting around here. They're not even really stories. One thing when we was talking about the lineage of the black actor belt last week, we forgot Idris Elba, Idris Elba, however you pronounce his name. I think he 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 could have been in contention for the black actor belt some years. For the women. Yeah, the most yeah. They love that boy. I mean, he's a serious black actor. You um, bashing women, don't call them hoes this podcast. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is that what call, it was? Is that why they said I we'll call them hoes bitches next week? <laughs> no, I was, it was stupid, man. I just playing. I just um, playing like them. So last week with me, <laughs> or two weeks ago with me and Los was having our pop up shop, best friend weekend pop up shop, selling best friend weekend gear. Please go to the website bestfriendweekend.biz forward slash shop or store. I don't remember which one it is, but we got the best friend weekend. Dad has a bunch of cool colors, new colors, whatever. We was out selling them at at our favorite car wash in the Houston area, <laughs> and this dude pull up. I just got to tell you all this story because the story is great. Dude pull up to get his car wash. So he drop his car off. He can get out the car. Next thing you know, the boy hop in somebody's passenger seat. And he sit down and talk to him. Then he get out. Then another car come. The boy hop in their passenger seat, yeah. talk to him. Get then out. he get out. Come order some food. Then he, he come order some food, walk around, rubbing his hands like Birdman. Then up. he walk a little bit down the street. And we like, man, that, he, he in another SUV. Like, what is he doing? Then all of a sudden, a big monster truck pull up. No AC. Uh, white dude looked like Joe Dirt, and his and his girl looked like she had about four teeth. And they was they was in the monster truck, and we like, oh, they about to get their car washed. Mm-mm. They, mm-mm. He can't. He got out that SUV, he came over there. He went dap old boy by the monster truck. Then he took off. <laughs> <laughs> then he went walk down the street to another car. <laughs> That boy turned the car wash to the trap, man. In a matter of minutes. Hey, boy. how somebody come to your place of business and turn your shit to the trap, dog? Yeah. Uh, Robert Williams heard I'm about the captain it. of this ship, <laughs> right? Robert Williams heard about this story and he said, "Hey, man, that nigga perp, that nigga blew, that nigga was smoking perp, all of them nigga shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the definition of blowing perp on a nigga shit." Like, how you pull up to somebody employment and just turn it into a drug trade, couldn't? I mean... Like, but what do you tell him? I mean, hurry up and get his car. That's all they could do. That's what they did. Because, they rushed his car yeah. to the front and was like, you could go. Because he was... I mean, he literally... I mean, for the... I know for the... No, a good 30 minutes, he got like six cars, seven cars, man. He set up shop. He got them things, bro. Yeah, he... He was rolling. He made about... So, if they wouldn't have moved him around, how long do you think he would have stayed? See, in my head, somebody said that uh like Los was like, Oh, he must have said, um, boy, I'm at the at the um at the wash, come come meet me. I don't think that's really what happened. I think he planned that. No. Like he told everybody, like, I'm gonna be there between the hours of four thirty and five fifteen Saturday. That's a pull up. We'll this say, see, exactly. I, I can't hear you, see I what you say? <laughs> he said exactly. Exactly. Okay. Speak on He here. planned it. Yeah, he planned that. He was I'm like I'm up there. Come I'm shop up with there, me. I'm up 4.30. Meet me up there. Come shop with me, 4.30. I'm both pulling up too, bro. I'm talking about back to back. The like, kids at the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, like, as a as a business owner, like, as a person, like, do you, can you run off business like that? Like, do you say, get away? You, you, you're not Walmart. You're not Target. You're not Dillard's. 
Like you, you're not getting business like that where you could just be where you nah. should be in the business of being like, get away from me. I don't nah, want to take your business. that man money. Just get him on there as fast as you can, though. Now he can't once he get his car washed, he can't set up shop over there like that. He can't just stay, stick around. He can't stay there. Your car because wash. it's always plausible deniability that we didn't know what he was doing. We like, definitely knew what he was doing. I, I think we do. I'm two hundred and six percent sure. But you know, it might be a, it might be a, a, a real uh, excuse for that. He might have been doing something else. I like what? I, I don't know. He might be giving hand jobs. He was selling flat tummy tea. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> flat, <laughs> tummy <laughs> flat tummy tea. <laughs> it was flat tummy tea, right? Throwback jerseys, one of the two. Either Either one. One. <laughs> Podcast is brought to you by yeah. Shannon. 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 Daishikis. And boy, he was selling fake Louis wallets. So, fake yeah, vi- he was selling vibranium out there. <laughs> he was definitely selling vibranium. Maybe he was selling, maybe he was selling Reggie. <laughs> no, he this definitely this wants something Reggie. 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 <laughs> they want pulling up for that Reggie Gina. He, he was moving in packs, man. Manny Pacquiao, Manny man. Pacquiao, was Pac-Man like, hey, Jones, man. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> Don't turn my shit to the track. Hey, how many? How how long did your March Madness bracket go? Um, until it was broken up. Like um, how long? Like how many games? Real talk. Like three, two. <laughs> I was done. Two games. I, I definitely was it. done. Like I picked Arizona to win the whole thing, and they lost the first day. Like two games, my shit was done for. I had Arizona in my final four. Yeah, it was it was it was shit, bad. But my for shit business. was busted by NC State. By who? NC State, first day, man. That was that was my sleeper for the for my bracket. Oh, he from North Carolina. He from NC State. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Oh, oh. okay. He don't know no better. That's like us picking Southeast Louisiana. Okay, I got you. I thought he was a dookie. <laughs> no way. No way. <laughs> I thought you would have picked Duke, man. Nah. He's not a dookie. I'm he looked like a dookie. At all. Nah. I, 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 I disagree, man. So everybody bracket's busted. But anyway, um, if your bracket, where, where your bracket will never be busted at hmm. is the Black Buster video. Go check him out, man. Um, hey, check out the. the we people voting too. People been hitting me up about that. It's a lot of people who voted for round one. Yeah. If y'all y'all see round one's over, it's down to the um uh, the round of sixteen. We're gonna actually be pushing pushing it up to the to the sweet sixteen on um what probably Friday. When so, we gonna break down the whole bracket. We should we should come over here and break the whole bracket. We'll down. break the bracket down um later. But at this point, a lot of good movies is out of there. But we got. The movie still remaining is Get Out versus Lean On Me, New Jack City versus Poetic Justice, Set It Off versus Love and Basketball, What's Love Got to Do with It versus Love Jones, Life, The Best Man, Wait Next Hell and Coming to America, School Days and Bad Boys, Juice in the Color Purple. We got The Wiz and Belly, Soul Food and Higher Learning, Dead Presidents and Menace to Society, mm. Jason Lyrics and Boys in the Hood, House Party and Hall of Nights, Black Panther versus Baby Boy. Ah, oh, Black Panther. Easy. Training Day and Friday, and the Wood versus the Five Heartbeats, and I actually voted for the Wood over the Five Heartbeats. You I love the Five Heartbeats, you but the Wood. It's the, 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 the it's more relatable to you. Ain't nothing like that Wood. It's more relatable. <laughs> he played me. Look, he played me. <laughs> but ain't nothing like that Wood. Nah, I'm, nah, I'm saying what you would say. <laughs> nah, it's relatable though. It's relatable. I love the Five Heartbeats. Ain't nothing like the Five Heartbeats. But I love uh, the wood. <laughs> <laughs> pause. pause. I was pa- you didn't even let me pause. pause but that wood, though. I also voted for the wood. Yeah. I also voted for the wood. That's your When that boy said, man, you let that nigga Terry hit. Yeah. And I know I look better <laughs> than that <laughs> nigga. Come on, man. That was my yeah, movie. Yeah, relatable, boy. <laughs> hey, wasn't the dude from the wood from North Carolina? Didn't he move to L.A. Yeah. from North Carolina? Shouldn't yeah, that be your favorite movie? Greensboro. I'm from North Carolina. I'm from North Carolina. You know, you know who Country getting there for me. <laughs> My high, that should be your favorite movie ever just because of that, man. Shout yeah. out. It's up there. It's up there. <laughs> it's up there. Shout out My High, bro. Man, look. Cue that music for nothing nice to say. You know, they say if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. Nothing nice to say, but I'll do nice. Listen to what I heard took place this week. A homeless woman was walking a bike across the street when she was struck and killed on Sunday night by an autonomous car operated by Uber in Tempe, Arizona. From what I understand, it's the first pedestrian death associated with self-driving technology. 
Am I wrong for immediately thinking that someone is going to claim this lady as their closest kin just to collect on that lawsuit that you know coming? That's not the point. I digress. Here's my question. Is this a one-off or is this the opening stages of a Skynet takeover? I need to know if John Connor is about to pop up from the future and let me know that the Model 1 T-800 is coming or worse off than that T-1000 with all them weird liquidy metal shit doing his thing and Terminator 2 is about to come for us. I just watched the first Terminator movie again and they said that they were coming back from 2029. I know they said that Judgment Day was August 29th, 1997, but what if they were off by a few years? Son, if they got Siri... Google Assistant, Alexa, sex dolls. Man, like, all of this crazy stuff happening right now with technology is bound to happen. Or maybe, just maybe, machines and self-driving cars aren't really the beginning and the end. Maybe they safer drivers than the 16-year-old driving that F-150. Or that drunk college kid in that Toyota Prius. Or that dude getting rolled here in that Dodge Charger. Or maybe that 75-year-old old school in that Oldsmobile that can't see over the steering wheel. Call me a nerd if you want, but I've done the research in robotics and understand that computers are dumb, but they're awesome. Matter of fact, they are perfect at doing remedial tasks repetitively. And you know what? I can't name a one task that's more remedial than driving a car. So are we going to blame that Volvo XC900S SUV that was doing 40 miles per hour in a 40 mi 45 mile per hour zone? Are we going to blame the woman? I don't want to sound bad, but I'm much more inclined to believe in human error than computer error. So for all y'all talking about these cars with a safety rating of 99.9999999% should be off the road, stop it. And if they want me to testify on behalf of the computer-driven Tesla, I'm with it. Because I ain't got nothing nice to say about people who feel like they can stop the wave of technology. So I can't say nothing at all. Um... <laughs> So that, you cool with robots just running I'm those cool hoes? with robots driving They're just cars. running those like, I absolutely am cool so with So you, you haven't seen... What's the, what's the Will Smith movie, iRobot? I'm cool with iRobot. You I haven't Robot. seen iRobot I'm cool with iRobot. They're going to take us over. That's what Y'all feel... Y'all feel like robots about to take over? I don't, look, I don't play with nothing I don't feel I like they're be. about to. I don't feel like they're about to. But I think that if we keep, if we keep letting them... Let them get more and more advanced. So y'all didn't see the robot that didn't miss a hold shot. Up, hold up, hold up. So, so I, I, I'm gonna go back and edit this podcast. And when you say that again, I'm gonna take the word robot out and I'm gonna put black people or niggers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're about to take over, but if we just let niggers <laughs> do whatever, <laughs> they can. <laughs> Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> Roger eyes. What's up? The boys have faked in there. Look, Roger eyes closed in that bitch. Look at Roger. <laughs> Roger eyes closed in there. <laughs> God damn. What you smoking in there, boy? Smiling. It's not my eyes going down. It's my cheeks going up. No, nah, my nigga. It is hot. He happy. Uh, best friend weekend, weekend, weekend. Four weeks away. I looked at my calendar this week. It was 320. I said, oh, that's one month from 420. Take that, take that. Take that, take that. So, four weeks from now, we're going to be live and direct. I'm ready, man. Tell a friend to tell a friend. It's and going tell a down. Friend, tell a friend. Hey, what? name me one for show club we're going to be at or a bar or whatever in the Denver area. Give me one for show spot we're going to be at, Raj. Mile High CI Studios. <laughs> What's we wrong with that? I got a bar in the right? curl. We're gonna be deep. I'm off, I'm off them right now. They <laughs> high and I'm off <laughs> them, man. Both of them. Stop playing the high. music, man. Both of them dumb, 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 retarded. Out of there. Look at Rod. I'm not high.